Hi everyone, welcome to our technical training of Manager One. My name is Miguel Celis. I'm pre sales engineer here at Comp and I will be your trainer today. I'm really happy to be here and be part of this training. Uh, if you already know, Comp do these trainings with some uh, periodical time. So if you have been here before in in one of our training, you already know how it works and uh, how our method uh, is implemented in these kind of trainings. So I want to I want to give you thanks for being here for being part of this training. Uh, I want to know where are you from, uh, where are you, um, in, in which country are you right now. I will wait some minutes in order to wait for more uh, assistance. But uh, you will be in, feel free to make your questions and to um, try to solve. I, I will try to solve any of your um, questions about this technical training. Okay, then. If you already know this channel, you can subscribe to this channel. You can then you will see all the content we are uh, frequently uh, uploading to this channel. So uh, I think we can start right now with the training. Okay, welcome and good morning for everyone. Okay, let's begin with our training. One more time, I'm Miguel Celis, a pre-sales engineer at COM. And today I will be your trainer for uh, this technical training about Manager One. Okay, let me talk about COM. COM is a Brazilian company. We are located in Florianópolis in the south of Brazil, in the state of Santa Catarina. It's a very well-known place not only for people from Brazil, from the different corners of Brazil, but also for people from South America, people from Argentina, Uruguay, Chile, uh, Paraguay, Bolivia. And this is because uh, Florianópolis is an island, is a very beautiful place, is a natural park. So here, the 70% of the land is completely protected so you will find here a lot of ecotourism uh, attractions so many people know because of this and it's very famous too because in the last 30 years the government of Florianopolis started to implementing a plan to make the city a technological and innovation spot so they were changing a lot of things here in order to provide the perfect conditions for the software and hardware development companies and all this introduction is uh, to put you in context from our point of view where we are who we are and how we grew up the last 25 years and how we become a company with more than two and a half hundred of collaborators with presence in more than 60 countries and more than 90 active products in four different technology verticals. Okay, let's begin with our training one more time. Okay, I want to talk in this slide about contact center challenges. Um, we already know that all of you work um, on, on this, who works in this field, in this market know that contact center have uh, some uh, challenges that is um, in order to grow up or in order to operate uh, the their platforms so one of the challenges is complexity in, when a contact center start to grow it's normal to be uh, 
that their all the infrastructure becomes more complex so it will be very difficult to manage all this um uh, all this amount of gateways dealers and um, zip elements or even other elements like databases uh, and so many tools that a contact center use so uh, management is a is a real challenges is a real challenge uh, on management so is is the same is like sometimes you don't have the right tools to do all the management you need and one of the most important for the the media of the the, the average of a contact center is unproductivity and productivity all contact centers want to be more productive so they want to invest in platform that helps you to do that okay just give me one minute i want to i want to to know if you can listen to me um is the audio is okay if you where are, where are you uh, located right now in in which country and if you want to do it your question in spanish or in portuguese or in english feel free to do it because this is a uh, this is our training uh, for the uh, uh, anglo saxon market is like people who speak english but i know that we have people from here in the in this training we have people from colombia from another part and other places in latin america okay so i'm going to give you an example about these challenges like everything who changed the cost in a contact center is this is completely undecidable it's like you um if you change your uh, your, your the size for your operation is if this is not planet you have a problem with that because it will change your course and this is completely uh, undesirable for a contact center and, and mainly for the for the people in the finance uh, units of the contact center so uh, whatever change the cost of the operation will be a problem so things like changing carriers changing providers and any it infrastructure management failure could be um could be changing cost um and everything you have to the contact center have to avoid all of these um each, uh, problems you know so another challenge is a non productive call i think this is one, one of the most um uh, imperative um, to actions to do the contact center every day is like they want to be more productive so uh, for example if you have an outbound contact center it's common that this kind of contacts of non-human contacts i mean uh, answer machine detection voicemails or anything is not a human is complete like undesirable it's like it's something that you read you don't want to to contact these kind of things and it happens a lot because sometimes the contact center doesn't have the right tools to avoid that another thing is signaling problems it's like it's normal it's like and uh, sometimes you have like different uh provided different carriers and the way they uh, use the all the SIP signaling is not the same. Sometimes our uh, the soft switch or the internal infrastructure have not uh, completely normalized SIP, and then you will have some problems. But this is part of what you really want to avoid in the contact center operation. Another is another case is that when you have a contact center ages, but they are like unoccupied. It's like you are um, you are not making enough good calls to contact your aging and to make it work. 
So this is a real problem and this is something that uh, is completely undesirable. And for the management of the contact center, I think that limited view is, is more common than we think that is, but um, it's a real problem. It's a real problem because sometimes we, we saw here at Comp so many contact centers and so many business who work with that that doesn't have enough information to diagnose their problems and to try and, and, and to improve your um, your operation. So they have like a very static and very fixed report platforms. So they are not like taking the right decisions. They are not making the right decisions. So they, uh, it's like they waste time and money and they doesn't get the success they, they really want. Okay, and I want to, to show you how is a, a common environment, how complex could be a contact center, because it's like we are, this part is very technical, it's like how looks a, a contact center. This is a simplified graphic, it's like we are not half, here in this graphic we don't have like all the elements that is inside the this this network like switches rotors or any other gateway but simplifying is uh, complex enough to understand that um it's really hard to manage all these platforms like you have for example you have uh it's common to have multiple dialers from multiple vendors so um, these dialers will host and will uh, you you will set up all the campaigns. Sometimes you have like hundreds of thousands of campaigns in one contact center. Maybe not all active, but you will have a lot of campaigns inside. And these campaigns could be in just one dialer or could be in in more than one dialer even in more than one dealer from more than one brand. And this is uh, makes it make it really complex because sometimes the IT people are really good to work with one dealer, but it's difficult to find people who can uh, understand and work and, and set up campaigns in, in three or four different vendors. And, and the vendors versions and and platforms so uh, this but this is something really common it's like okay if you are in a contact center you will find uh, dialers from vocalcom bichy dial uh, uh, abaya or you will find genesis or any other brand and every everything like uh, together in the same place, uh, in the same uh, in the same the SIP network, so um, it's common to 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 see that in your contact center. And in the other side, in the in the in the right part, you will see like different gateways. And all these gateways, uh, that at the same time is, is exactly the same. Like the others, you will have the gateways from different vendors. So, and from different technologies, so you can have like a physical gateways like uh, TDM uh, gateways uh, who speak with uh, E1 trunks or T1 trunks with different uh, technologies with different amount of channels. And, and this is in, in not all countries you will see that, but for least for a license in latin america you will find a lot here we are still using a lot of these kind of providers like the old ones that use a uh, legacy telephone system like e ones or t ones and but um, but you can you you will find two like uh, sbcs session border controllers so you can see um all these 
the dialers speak. You will see these lines with different colors we, that we have here in this graphic. And you have something like a mesh network. So it's like everyone speaks with everyone and all these boxes interact directly with the other boxes. And this is something very complex because anytime you need to change something in one of these boxes, you will need to change in another one and all the other ones because it's okay. Uh, if you need to create a new road, okay, you will have to put it this road not only in the in the dialer, but also you will need to configure this new road in your gateways. That makes uh, the management of this platform really complex and. All this, all of this graphic uh, suggests how we start thinking to create a solution like Manager One. So, for us, Manager One is a smart way to use SIP resources. And why we say that? Because it's like, okay, we saw before that it's it's really complex, and what we want to give you if a solution that could make it more simple to manage and at the same time that can give you a very deep uh, performance uh, analysis so you can like you can get insights really you can make a zoom and go really deep to the data who will really will give you uh the real performance the real like uh, show you the reality of the performance in your uh, operation so you will have centralized management too and then all your platform it platform will be centralized with managers so you will need to ch do changes uh, or not commonly will need to do changes in your gateways or in your dialers because everything will be like configured uh, in a way that only like only setting the manager you will get access to all the resources. I, I will speak more about this in the next uh, slides. And you have artificial intelligence and code progress analysis too. This is something that I will speak to in the next slides okay perfect and when we talk about performance analyzer we are trying to diagnose the subsidies of your uh, telephone uh, operation and we are not debugging like okay uh, uh, some, some some tools are really focused into debugging problems or um, all these uh, technical things that happen in the low level. Uh, we can do that too, but this is not the focus of what manager wants to provide. For us, we really want to diagnose the sources of your network in order to help to you to make the right decisions and be assertive to achieve your goals. So we can do... Um, uh, we can all these problems that you see here in this slide is what we are trying to solve it's like okay you have difficult to diagnose infrastructure failure and blind spots we can help to you to do that because we have the technology everything is centralized we can we can perform a lot of measurement of quality of voice but at the same time we can measure the quality of signaling of your uh, carriers and your dealers and we can add uh, directly to the performance of your telephone operation so and um we can do like okay we can show you more information at the real time it's like i can show you what's happening what's going on with your um, network at the real time uh, i will give you kpis so and you, you, when I say real time, it's like actually is like 30 seconds, but this is good enough to to see and to be proactive. If you want to make the, a decision, some sometimes a car is not performing the the right way. You can do some changes. Okay, perfect. 
you have the information to be sure that uh, that could be a good decision. So this is part of what we uh, want to provide our premises with um, with manager one is give you a real time performance analysis. And this is how it looks. It's like you have a dashboard. This is the insight. Um, in this uh, training, I want to be um, I want both focus in the insight because it's not this is not the this is only the first training we are going to do. We are going to have in the next weeks. We are going to have uh, an advanced training. But for now, this is the the training you need to. This is the dashboard you will associate with, okay, how comp show you all the information. And then you will, in this dashboard, you will have like tremendous amount of information that will help to you to understand what's going on, what's happening with your uh, operation and with your uh, telephony uh, platform. So I can see here, like in the, in the left side, you will see a map, this map, in this slide is a uh, map from Brazil, but you, will, you you can have like from the states or from Mexico, Argentina, where we want the uh, insight. Uh, insight. We are we already have this tool in a lot of countries. They are completely customized to works with your land. Um, no matter what your country is. And then we are going to position where are your elements. Okay, for example, you have a flow, but insights not only work with the flow, with insights is a business intelligence platform who works with uh, our line, KNG line, UNG line. You can, you can go to com.com if you want to see the other hardware solution we have to uh, connectivity. But Insight is um, is a business intelligence platform for telephony, so it's compatible with all our uh, product lines. So when you use with Flow, you will see like one of these pointer you you have in the one of these pointer. I want to activate. Just give me a minute. I'm going to activate. If they left me here, okay. Okay, so if you see one of these pointer, this pointer will tell you where is located the, the machine of the flow. For example, if you have the um, you have installed the flow, flow is one of the components of the manager one. We will talk more with more detail, but think think in flow as a SIP server. So this SIP server could be installed in a virtual machine, in a bare metal uh, platform, or even in the cloud. But if you have inside your data center, this pointer will give you, okay, the location of this flow. And the country that is green in this, um, in this image is where are your operation based? Okay, you are, you are working for Republica Dominicana, you are working for the states, you will see the map. Where are you dialing? For example, if I have an abound contact center, you will see, okay, where where we are dialing. Okay, you will see that map here. Okay. Another thing you will find is this um this circle, this is like a pie, a, a diagram, and you will see all the information about a uh, hundred thousands uh, of your call of all your operation. For example, in this in this screen, you don't have activated any filter. I have a key the filter. We don't have activated any filter, so you will see all the resolve of all your operation in the last hour. So I can see I have some some numbers about invalid numbers strong line overflow, rejected, and normal call clearing. This, this, is, the, this is the calls that uh, dialed and was answered and have a normal call clearing. So if you see 
we have here a lot of information in and that is only one screen this is the dashboard screen so it's important to keep in mind that uh, is, this is not a training about insight we are going to give you a training about insight uh, in the next weeks but this is our dashboard and this is how we give you and present to all of you the information that we centralize in the flow okay and when we talk about manager we have to say that routing is uh, is a very important thing for manager i think it's like uh, everything we do is uh, is based in the routing and we have routing uh, it's a very advanced routing and is uh, implemented for high performance contact centers so the goals we want to achieve is a better performance and contactability we have to provide to you to enough information to uh, make proactive decision we want to give you more accurate reporting we want to give you graphical advanced records and alarms notification too so everything is once you implement the flow and the manager in your network uh, you will have enough information to see all this uh, and you will definitely you will start improving your performance Okay, and it's very important to talk about the manager one elements. So, for example, we are we say okay, manager one, but manager one is not only a software. It actually is a suite of software. Some of these software are like, or or even are actually are features inside. So. For example, if you want to have all the information that Insight provides to you, if you want to have this dashboard that I showed before with all the information about the performance in your network, no matter what uh, your vendors are, for example, I, okay, I, I want to really concentrate all the, all the statistics and all the KPIs in one platform. Uh, and I have a data from Genesis. I have a data from VocalCon. I have a, any other PBX. So, but at the same time, I, I just w want to see all the performance of my telephone network in just one equipment. So you can install the flow, you can configure and you can set up all the scenario in a way you can centralize everything in flow and the flow will start obviously uh, with the inside will start give you all the information about this your about your telephone network or your telephony platform so this could be an application then in that case you will only need this flow and the insight is all what you need then you can connect all your dealers all your gateways even if you have an svc this is doesn't have to be SBCs or gateways from com, no matter what. If speak SIP, SIP is good enough to us. We can uh, connect to this element and we can send calls and we can receive calls from this element. And at the same time, we are acquiring a lot of information about the operation. So we we put here okay the kmgs that is our gateways and the virtual svc that is like is our sb solution but if you have any other brand will be okay it's like we can send calls to to your gateway so you don't have to change anything in your uh, infrastructure you have only to put a new element and obviously you will have to think and you have to uh, size the this this platform in order to find the the good uh, hardware requirements for operate the flow flow is a software so you will have to install in a in a bare metal or in a virtual machine so when you have everything connected everything is processing centralized in the flow 
So all the calls that we connect to the contacts, uh, agents, and everything you connect with the carriers will pass through uh, the flow so we can capture and we can get all the information we need to give you all these indicators and uh, populate the dashboard and show you the information. Then keep in mind that this will be like the common uh, architecture of your flow. And only when you need a answer machine detection or a call progress detection solution, you will think about analytics. Okay, this is very useful and this is very powerful when you have a contact center who do a outbound uh, operation. Okay, if you have an, uh, an outbound contact center, this is perfect because we can really improve your contactability. We can really help you to reduce cost uh, related with uh, with um, unnecessary connections to the carrier, so uh, we can really improve the, the performance of your of your telephone network. I'm going to talk more in the next slides. Okay, so we say that, okay, this is a smart way to route and to use just resources. And uh, at the same time, it's a smart routing solution because when you put flow, you can do routing, you can do advanced routing, you can do classification, and you can integrate with different platforms, not only with C platforms, and I will show you why I say that. Uh, for example, you have APIs to integrate with another element of your contact center uh, technology. For example, if you want to make a condition a, a conditional routing based in a consultation in a in a database this is something that you can do in our uh, flow you, we can we have enough uh, apis or enough uh, methods to contact and to speak with another elements in your contact center network so uh, this is something that we are think about it it's like okay we want to our customers can do this like cons do consultation and do conditional routing not only based in information the SIP information but instead in based in the databases or even if you want to console via uh, web services you can do all of this Okay, and it's totally integrated with Insight Analytics. Insight is our business intelligence platform. I, I speak before about the Insight. And Analytics is all call progress detection or call classification a feature that is in the flow is completely licensable. You have to acquire a license, a license for the number of, the, for the amount of call that you want to do this kind of processing okay uh, another thing that helps you uh, our flow is allowed to centralize all telephony operation decreasing and planning and changing costs okay you can start thinking like more proactive you you have a really powerful uh, the book tool and you will have a really powerful um, performance analysis tool so you can start like you can start like okay get a better uh, uh, visualize the real condition the real state of your platform network so um, this is one of the things that we are in focus so this will help you to decrease the operation and planning and planning and changing costs so uh, is is think to be uh, um, to do this this task okay and then let me talk about a little more about uh, how interact all these elements in the last uh, graphic i show you like a very general graphic but here maybe you can understand how we divide all this um all these elements for example you have six servers who are 
the task of this server, the SIP servers are like dial calls. It's like it's a normal it's a normal tool in a contact center. Have a dialer uh, when you want to do um, outbound calls. <coughs> Sorry, uh, you are going to need dialers. It's like is the is the right a SIP engine to do that, but also you can have IBRs or you can have PBIX. So all these elements are going to talk with our flow. And I want to say that our flow gains the, in the last version, the option to separate the signaling from the audio processing. This is a new thing and, and this makes our solution more scalable so with this kind of architectures we are uh, we can handle more than 35,000 uh, calls at the same time that's uh, we uh, what we our tests uh, give us um, so you will have this flow and the flow will be only taking care of the signaling and you will have different boxes that we call media unix that can be virtualized virtualized too and the focus of this media unit will be the process of all the media in only the media so they can make transcoding they can help you with the analysis of the call pro progress detection they will have all the model of the analytics there and the flow will give the information that they need to process the the call but all the media processing will be there and the flow will be focused only in signally signaling processing okay remembering too that you can have a uh, high availability because sometimes we say okay you have to centralize all your operation in only one machine and for some customers like okay this, that, that's not a good idea I have a very complex um, uh, architecture and I don't want to put all my all my operation in just one machine and it, obviously we can understand that but at the same time we uh, in the very beginning when the flow burns with the manager one burns uh, they born with uh, HI, so you have high availability in order to provide to you um, uh, the continuity of your operation that you need for your uh, for your uh, operation. So you have a media unit, you have high availability, and you have the inside that is. Um, is hosted in our comp cloud uh, so the flow will provide the information all the information uh, of the calls in the inside no matter what you where you are you can go to your uh, domain and you will have a domain you have a, a username and a password and you will get into the inside and see what's going on with your uh, operation no matter where you are okay because this is everything in internet only the inside is in internet so you will have all this information available anywhere you are okay and the flow at the same time the flow is speak with everything is connected to the PSTN no matter what technology they use then the flow will be connected with uh, gateways uh, physical gateways TDN gateways analog gateways GSN gateways uh, and obviously with session border controllers too. No matter what is the brand, no matter what is the vendor, the flow will be able to communicate with these SIP elements. So uh, all these elements will interact with the flow. We can set the elements, we can smart routing, we can do like uh, okay, we Everything is centralized in the flow, so it's easy to control. Okay, I want to dial a star uh, dialing to a SIPTRON that is in the SBC. Okay, perfect. Okay, now 
the SBC is not, uh, I, I need to maintain the SBC. So I want that call, uh, th this campaign that is in the dealer A goes to another gateway. You can do that easily. You don't need to, you don't need to touch your dealers. You don't need to touch your gateways. Everything will be set up to do it easily. So even if you can automatize this, will be easy to do that too. So I think is uh, this is one of the things that makes the flow really power. You don't need to understand ten technologies, uh, gateways, and the others. You you will only need to do the the changes in our flow. Okay. Centralized management, how I said before, one the Google tool. Okay, do you want to debug anything you want to debug? Do you want to debug the performance of a dealer? You do you want to debug? Do you want to do a benchmarking of your carriers? You can do it easily in the flow. Taking everything is controlled by the inside, but at the end, it's the flow that provides all the information to do this to this benchmark. So um, that's why they they work together. Okay, if you want to have an answer machine detection or a call progress stone a system, you can license only in the flow and you will have it available for all the elements in your network. So it will be really easy to, to, to operate, it's just, okay, uh, this campaign is going to be uh, is going to use uh, analytics. I want to really know uh, who answered my calls. If, if I want to filter all the calls and only provide human contact calls, okay, analytics can do that in, in even better. Can they, can do that in any language, uh, in any dialer for any dialer. Some dialers doesn't have this kind of a tool so um it's very important to to have one of these uh tools for uh, especially for outbound operations so uh, you don't have to license in each of your dealers if they if they have the option some dealers doesn't have so uh, you can have it only in the flow and that would be enough it's like okay I have a good centralized answer machine detection, so I don't need to put uh, a license in my, of my dialer in each um, in charge my dialer of this process because it's a classification is a very demanding uh, resources operation. The, so everything is controlled in our flow in our media unit, so you don't need to alt, uh, activate that function in your um, in your dialer and another uh, another good reason to do that is because our analytic is uh, is so accurate it's like okay we can say to you in 98 percent of your calls which answer to you what okay what kind of answer you have okay what's a human answer was a fax was a answer machine was a uh, interception uh, message whatever you got from the PSTN the com is going to give you the information what answer to you so we are really accurate because we are we use a lot of uh, artificial intelligence to do that and we have a uh, a big success with this uh, technology not only here in Brazil uh, also in all Latin America. Okay, we have high availability, how I said before, and we have up to 40,000 sessions, uh, concurrent or simultaneous session in this platform. I say 35,000, but um, this is the official number. Okay. And when we talk about high performance routing, we have we have to think about um, all can happen in the real 
uh, in, in a real operation, okay? You will have errors, you have you have to automatize uh, everything you can automatize to make it more, um, to, to improve the performance of your network. But not all the elements you have are the, are smart enough to to do that. So that's why Flow can provide to you to the intelligence you need to to set all this policy, uh, all this policy of uh, dialing in your uh, network. So that's why we uh, we say, okay, you need this kind of uh, technology in your platform in order to with with a really low cost you can take everything out of your platform so this, this is a very good way to uh, overhaul your network your telephone network it's like it's, it's part of uh, is part of what we are promising here it's like uh, you don't need to change or update your platform we know that is really is really expensive to do that but we can help to you with this little change. You can get out the best of or from these elements. Okay. Okay. Let Let's talk about virtual circuits. Uh, this is something really focused to our um, our line of gateways. So. If you don't have any of our gateways, maybe this is not interesting for you. But if you already have some of our gateways, let me say let me say that you can use your platform, all these gateways, and Flow will take um, advantage of of the way we communicate with these gateways. For example, if you have a KNG with a TDM gateway like E1 or T1. We can send more information to the flow so the flow can see, for example, which channel and which E1 is using any uh, any call. So all this information, when you have like another run gateway, we only have a SIP communication. We cannot synchronize all that data. So uh, we don't have that kind of control of w what's happening with the links of the T1s or E1s. But if you use um, COM, you get all this information. So this information will be recorded in, in the inside um, tickets. So you will see all the information. You can track all that, uh, all that data in your course. And uh, this is only for KMG uh, family line, okay? It's very important, but uh, only applies if you already have a KMG. Okay, another good feature is the call admission control. We can control like the uh, simultaneous calls in your uh, trunks or in your dialer. If you want to put some limits in your and uh, dialing for example if you want to do a uh, low balance but uh, it's a very advanced low balance of course you can do that if you want to put some policies to not to uh, over um to not to pass the limit of the of your um, group of uh, dialers you can do that uh, in a really smart way you can do it by simultaneous call you can do it by Call attempt per second is the amount of uh, invites the flow can receive from any other element or any SIP element in one second. It's like, okay, for example, if I have a SIP trunk with a carrier and the carrier say, okay, you have 300 simultaneous calls, but you can only uh, deal with 30 calls per second. So, if you want to complete the 300 calls, you will need 10 seconds, okay? But I cannot control the speed of my dialers. It's like some, some dialers allows you to do that, but not some others doesn't allow it to you. So the flow can help to you to handle that in order to not start like receiving 
this hangar chaos like throne line overflow or something like that is like this is like okay i don't have circuits to do that call but actually it's, it's not the real um, case because it's not about the simultaneous call, it's about the simultaneous attempts uh, calls per second. Okay, it's like it's the speed. Okay, the tongue, the, the trunk is a 300 simultaneous call trunk, but you only can deal with at 30 calls per second. That is an example, but it's very common to find. The kind of this kind of cases in the real world. So the flow lets you to manage this, and you can you can control that in a very smart way. And another way to control that is by legs of your call. So you can you can put the limits in the legs, and that makes sense when you have different dialers with different campaigns and then you don't want to cross the limits of the of your simultaneous call of your carrier so you can put limits in every lead so then you never will send more calls that is allowed to your zip trunk Okay, this is going to be the advanced routing is going to be part of our next training. The next training is scheduled for I think it's 16 of June. We have a great content there. Like you will see, you will see all the capabilities of the manager one um, in order to uh, understand the advanced all the advanced features like uh, routing or like analytics and for example like all this uh, api interaction with uh, databases and all and how can you um, interpret and understand the insight so we are planning a most advanced uh, training for the future so keep in contact you you will get um our all our not notification via email the same way you you receive this training you will receive for the others okay so advanced routing is uh is a system that we create in our flow to provide a advanced way to route your call so we have four different kind of scripts you have a pre-routing script you have a post-routing script transfer and post code let me explain each one of these cases for example pre-routing pre-routing is uh, a script that will be ex executed um, before routing if you send a call and you want to check if that number could be the contact center is allowed to call that number then we can consult we can go to a database and do some consultation and to uh, get back get an answer okay you can call or you cannot call uh, you cannot call that number so this is an example of a pre-routing script. You can do a consultation in a database. It's part of what you can do. Or, for example, if you want to send an information to a, a tariff, I don't know, it's like, like a billing system. Okay, billing system. If you have a billing system and you want to, you have to uh, notify your billing system that you are calling a, an specified a call you can do that without any problem another example is uh, another kind of mm, routing is the post routing is anytime you you do um, an action that occurred after routing okay you already send a call and you want to notify to an element in your network that you already send that call you can do it 
using a post routing script. Another thing is when the call is not going to be in the flow anymore, you are going to transfer. This, this is not a common scenario in, in the contact center, but if you want, maybe in a PBX will be more, more common. But if you want to transfer that call and send it to to another element, zip element, and the, that call won't be in the flow anymore because it will be transferred. And you can do that and you can execute an action when the, the transfer occurs. So you you don't need to you don't need to um you can you can do some I don't know like some action to for supervisation or supervising or whatever to do that uh, um, that task okay uh, and another script is a post call script that occurs that that happens when um you have like okay the call is finished call is finished and you need to notify something to some element then you can uh, execute this script to finish the call the, co the call will finish first and then execute the uh, script after the hangup okay let me see if you have any question i'm, I'm, I'm going to wait for just let me change the screen let me change the screen and see if you have any question here okay luciano e igor thanks for being here and um, they are uh, luciano if our trainer in the national markets here in brazil and igor is our sales manager so feel free to contact igor uh, if you have any commercial question for uh, if you want a price or you want to study uh, uh, if you want to do even a, a demo a try and buy then Igor is the right person to talk with uh, uh, about these kind of things if you want a price of a, a solution if you are resizing something Igor is the perfect person uh, I will let you. I will give you the. Um, I will give you the contact of Igor in the last slide in this, um, in these slides. Okay. So, once again, thanks for being here. If you have any question, please let me know. Let it in the chat. We are going to be uh, watching this um, these questions. So uh, it's part of our philosophy in these trainings you we are here we are like taking care of the content at the same time you can say it and you can make your questions in the youtube channel okay okay going back to our slides and uh, i want to say that i don't have i don't know if you have any on uh, any doubt of the content till now but i want to talk about this CIRREC CIRREC feature is a is a very interesting um, feature, uh, mainly for the contact centers that already have a recorder solution. It's like okay, if you have a platform like Nice or a Redbox or Orec X or whatever you use that uh, use this protocol, the CIRREC is a Actually, CIRREC is a technology that was uh, developed 100% only for the uh, recording in a SIP system. So um, you have a SIP network and you have a recording who you CIRREC. Flow is perfect because Flow uh, can speak the same language with this recorder and we can pass a lot of information um, uh, mainly for um, for metadata information that is very important uh, when you need to do a consultation uh, of these records or, or, or of this uh, re record that is registered in the in the recording system. Okay, you need uh, 
you you want to provide uh, information about any specifically call so this is this is the where seal reg is really strong uh, because it's going to talk the same language with the with the, uh, the with the recorder so they can give you they can provide a lot of information about the call okay so it's very easy to to understand it's like the flow is going to is going to provide all the separate uh, protocol and the rtp that is actually the rtp is the audio so the recorder doesn't need to like intercept or doesn't need to uh, make complex uh, architecture to get that uh, audio information because we are sending that we are providing that rtp we are providing all the information of the call so uh, make it everything uh, easy easier so um, that's how cbrec works okay and another improve that we we gain um i think i think almost a year ago is the mean opinion score the most is a is a very famous way to um to measure the um, audio quality okay and that provides to you a lot of information on what's happening in any leg of your call and what's happening in terms of uh, audio quality so uh, you will get uh information uh, this is useful to see uh, the performance of your carriers and your dealers or even if you have the performance of any other element in the middle for example if you are you have a router or a switch in your network and this is not working correctly you can see okay this part of the network is having jitters or are having a echo or having any problem associated with uh, the the latency of the communication this okay this is you useful to detect this kind of problems and the best thing is that everything is disqualified of your network is happening locally another thing is the all this information is going to your cdr and you can see the quality of the call so when you when when you get a, a if you if you are like if you are measuring this you can took some tracking and go to a specific call and say okay this call was wasn't good and uh, but where was the problem where in the leg of the carrier or in our internal leg then you can know that and the best thing too is that everything is going to inside too so you will you will get that information in the cdr locally in the flow but at the same time you will see all this information in this in the inside so when you go to tickets in the inside you will see the information about most in any leg of the call okay another good improve of our flow was um we gained a lot of codex support okay flow in the very beginning flows only have uh, had um so support for g711 so and um, if you have any other codex a unix something in the middle that do this uh, transcoding something like a virtual svc and that's why we are always like okay sometimes you need the virtual svc mainly for security reasons but in sometimes in a few cases we suggest to use the flow for do transcoding because in some cases we don't we can't uh, in, uh, do an implementation without transcoding so with the new architecture with the the media units we gain the possibility to work even with uh different codes that uh, u law and a law so um right now you can use all these codes that i'm showing here 
And even, even we can do analytics with this codex too. So take that in mind. It's like this is something that we changed in our last version of Flow. Okay, I already talked about high availability. High availability is basically basically is um is duplicate the flow. It's like you will have two instances running flow, and then one of the instances will be like a, a passive one will be in a standby, and the other will be active, will be active. So um you will have this one to will be like processing all the all the calls. And the other will will be monitoring the state of this active one. So in the moment the active goes down, if you, okay, if this one is the active, and this one is the is the standby one, if if this one drops, start to work, then this instance uh, becomes the active one. So uh, you won't lost the the operation okay you will lose you will lose the calls in that moment but in less than 30 seconds you will be able to dial again or to receive call from your pstn network okay our uh, architecture is very adaptable and flexible is like how i said before you can have uh, a bare metal is a physical server or if you want to have a virtualized scenario, okay, you can use whatever you use to for virtualize. If you use a Beamware Hyper-V or you use a KVM for Linux, and I will show you in the last, in, in the practical part, I will show you my virtualization platform. I, I use here in our lab or technical training lab we use a Prosmox. It's a very powerful platform that use KBM. So it's very easy to to implement if you need to to do it in a platform in a virtualization platform. So uh, you, but also you can have in cloud. You can have all this in cloud. So you can understand. You you can put it in your cloud or we have a new product. That is manager one cloud. So if you want to to use the manager and you don't want to have all the implementation cost and all the all the implementation task, like okay, I need a physical server and I need a virtual machine, or in your in your scenario allows you to to do it with a cloud. Okay, perfect. You can use our cloud. It will be, will be faster. It will be easy. It will be cheaper. So uh, I really recommend to you to consider this uh, this solution, manage cloud, completely in cloud. Okay. So how I said before, sometimes you need um, analytics. So um, when you need analytics, it's mainly when you have an operation that is an unbound operation. So uh, it's important to you to know what is answering to you. It's like, okay, I need I need to know uh, what is human and what is not human and only send humans to my contact center operation. That could be one case. Um, and then we can classify with a lot of accuracy if you are having a human answer, a voicemail, a fax, a carry message, whatever you want, I will show you more than these uh, different type of answers in the next uh, slide. But at the same time, it's a very powerful and very customizable uh, platform because no matter what language you speak or what uh, language are you operating, the the analytics can adapt to that so okay you have i need to classify voicemail in in singapore or in vietnam or have an operation in india 
for half an operation in Africa. No matter, it's, it's like, for us, it's very complex to, th to, 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 to operate in a language where we are not able to speak. So what we do with analytics in this version, like 2.0, is uh, provide to you um, the option that you will start, you will be like um, a part of the, of the configuration process because you will use this um, artificial intelligence uh, um, tool to show the platform, okay, this is a voicemail, this is an interception, interception message, or this is a, a, a answer machine, and you will help us to uh, do this fine tuning of the platform in order to achieve the better performance of the classification. So, yeah, at the end, you can decide with uh, different actions, and I will tell you later what kind of which kind of action you can select, and you can run any action and you can disconnect the call you can play an audio or you can connect the call and then i will talk more about in the in the next slides okay so the common application of all of this is okay i have different the others uh, i have the flow with everything okay i, I like you decided to use insight, flow, analytics, everything is, is, is licensed and everything is um, working perfect. So uh, this is how we look your platform, okay? And this flow could be with HA or not, but this is how it's going to look. And then you will organize all the zip flow, okay? Everything is going to talk with the flow. So we are not having this mesh network anymore. It's like everything is centralized in a flow. The flow is providing me all the performance analysis. The analytics is giving me the uh, code classification for all the elements. And the inside is, um, is my business intelligent platform. So everything I need to know about the performance of my of my telephone network will be available in with the right clicks and the well, with the right filter in the inside. So this is a, a perfect solution with the uh, with the ma major part of contact center. Perfect. Let's talk about a little more about analytics, about analytics or classification system. Uh, I put there is like also known as AMD, and the Amazon machine detection uh, is a very common name. I'm not. I really don't like to use the, this kind of name like answer machine answer machine detection because for us analytics is more than that. Actually, what analytics does is like describing what's happening in the in your call. Um, all time of you in your call in terms of audio so you can understand okay what's what's going on with that call um, and to do that we have different different methods to do depends of what are where what where we are in the call it's like the state okay it's a pre-connect classification or it's a post-connect classification so uh, we can use like audio fingerprint to do that or we can do uh, a different approach for analysis of what's going on with the audio. We can analyze silence, we can analyze patterns, we can analyze uh, audio fingerprints patterns, so uh, tones and a lot of things. This is, this is a really complex approximation, but the results are amazing. It's like this is that you have to keep in mind the results we can get it and it's really, really interesting. And even more, 
you can be part of the customization of this. You can make it more uh, accurate. Uh, you can make it more flexible. So uh, this is the, the, the big advance that we gain in the version 2.0. So what can we cla classify? We can classify voicemail, answer machine, interception announcement. We can classify interception signaling, forward announcement. We have a classification that we, we call like unknown announcements. And this is a very good indicator of the level of accuracy of our analytics i will i will show you in the in that training that we are going to do the 16th of june and we can classify portability identification ring back signal short human answer this is a this is a common this is the the kind of answer we want it's like uh, normally in the in the in the major cases uh, our customers look us for a tool that can provide and can filter and can uh, give to the agents to the human agents someone who speak so they want to filter all that uh, i don't want to say garbage but it's like undesirable calls Okay, I don't want to connect a voicemail to my agent because that make me makes me lost money. That may, makes me lost time. So what I really know, what I really want is my my agent speaking with someone. So that's why we are going to uh, do this. Uh, this is this is the main goal of this analytics. Okay. If you want to make us to provide to you real people to your agents, we can do that. So we can uh, we are really good classifying so short human answer, and this is something really interesting because when you say okay, when you speak about Latin American countries, uh, the majority of Latin American countries uh, speak Spanish, so. Everyone who speaks Spanish is okay. Okay, we'll be perfect if, if I'm from Colombia and someone from Chile or someone from Mexico. If, if we are together, we we will be speaking the same language. But at the at, at the same time, it's, it's not like it's not that easy. It's like okay, we have different accents. We have different words for some uh, uh, things. So they have a cultural thing that maybe some platforms for some answer machine platform doesn't fit. It's like it doesn't understand. With analytics, we can even go further. It's like okay, we, we can go deeper. Okay, in Mexico, people in Mexico doesn't answer the the telephone. Exactly like people in 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 Colombia or people in in Argentina, it's completely different. So the analytics can help you, incluso, to do that regionalization of the platform in order to achieve the most. It's like the most precise classification. So I really know when is uh, when you have a short human answer, when you have a uh, what kind of answer I'm, I'm getting from the PSTN network, no matter what, if they answer like, hola, hello, mande, diga, okay, everything, all of these options, all of these are uh, human answers. So we really know with very accuracy uh, that this is a human answer. This is, the, this is one of the main um, advantage of the analytics. Okay, and what can you do after the classification? This is something really interesting because it's not only what answer to me is uh, if what can I do post classification? What can I do with it with this classification? So uh, it's very important. For example, so some operation they say, okay, my my operation, my contact center operation is not for contacting or for connecting P 
people with agents is everything less. It's like, okay, I want to, I want to let a voicemail message when the people, when the voicemail uh, goes, uh, when, when the call is, is forward to the voicemail. So in that case, you want to drop the human answer calls. When you get a uh, hola or hello or hi, then the analytics will drop the call in this kind of behavior, in this, in this profile, will, will drop the call, will notify why drop the call, and at the same time, he will um, wait for, uh, in, 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 another, in this same campaign, in other call, he can detect a voicemail and then, wait the right time the right moment to let a play to do a playback of a message and this is something really really difficult to do uh, it's not only listen the message is listening all the messages not do the classification okay what answer to me is listen all the message and trying to find the right moment to let the that audio so it's something that a lot of um a lot of contact center are doing right now they're con contacting like they are like um doing these uh contracts with some companies that uh, wants not to contact people is just only let a voicemail message in their in the uh, in the voicemail of the customer so um this kind of actions you can customize as a post classification action in our analytics because we have a lot of options like ignore notify drop play an audio and drop answer retry and then you can build uh, any behavior just using all these options and what allowed us to do or to have different uh, behaviors is analytics profiles and how we implement that. Okay, we know that we have different dialers, different setups, different ropes, different apps. So we have behaviors. We, we can program different behaviors for different um, scenarios. So uh, this this screen right next to to the these boxes, this screen from this screenshot from the configuration uh, profile, um, help apps to understand. I will show that uh, mm -hmm. later. But uh, the good thing is that keep in mind that you can do all that customization for have different behaviors of analytics. Okay, um, for this, I'm not sure what kind of contact center are participating here in this streaming, but uh, I know that the majority of the outbound contact center are trying to sell in something or are trying to collect uh, some debt. So uh, it's very common to to use this kind of technology in that kind of uh, contact center operation because they don't want to spend money uh, like going to voicemails or losing time because they have they have people that they are paying for people who can uh, contact human people and try to collect that debt. So uh, we can do a really great job reducing that times and, and increasing productivity so we can increase productivity we can provide a less downtime we can give provide a more accurate reporting uh, ECs, uh, easier management and collection group real-time monitoring of answer and or health calls that are not interested to operate Integration with web services to choose the best operator according to the operation of the CD, CERM. And I want to, in this uh, image, in this slide, is the way we are 
training the platform. So, okay, how we train the platform to make it more accurate and to improve the performance of the classification. So this is a, is a new way to see the analytics because in the first version of analytics, everything was uh, configured, was set up by our support team. And right now, you the, the customer is part of that uh, process. It's like, it's not only us to configure, to set up, it, they can help you. They, they must help us in order to find the best uh, the best uh, performance. So this is my this is the like the the quality order is like you have to do the call, you have to clustering, you have to do classification, you have to train, and you have to update the flow. This is like the steps of this training. Let me talk about let me talk more about this analytics training. I, I'm just going to show you uh, the screenshots, but in the I promise you that in the in the next training, the next advanced training, we can make a, a on on air that training. So you have to go to the inside. You have to click in classification, go to the training, and start a new training. Then you have to choose your flow, which is the which is the the flow. You can have one inside with different with a lot of flows. So if you have more than one flow, you have to choose okay which one you want to train. And you have to select the location. Okay, this operation is based on is in the states. So I'm going to select English states or this operation is Spanish, but this is Spanish is from Colombia. Then you have to select the pattern of this classification. Is is where is located the operation? It's like okay, what are you going to call for? What are you going to call? That's that's the the difference. Okay, so after this, you are going to uh, you are going to start a dialing. That's why we always the ones who already pass uh, implement implementation of manager knows that we ask to all customers to make calls. Um, normally, we ask for at least uh, 4,000 calls. So I, I need to know, I need to know the different kind of answer I will receive from our, our, uh, uh, from your PSTN network. That's very important. It's like, okay, if you are from Mexico, if you are from Colombia, or if you are from the States, our uh, repository of audios will help because we already we trained a lot of uh, a lot of um, customers in these countries so we have repositories and we have a better performance for this kind of operation but when you have like when you have uh, for example okay someone from French want to use our analytics okay it's possible no we don't have any problem but it's not the same french that they speak in canada that they speak in french so we need to do it again so okay. we need to we need to go and we we will ask for the uh, customer to start calls and we are going to audit that audit is record uh, audios from that uh, specific region and that specific language so we can have a base to start and then after collecting that audios when you when the customer um, finish the dialing and the 4000 calls dialing then the flow is going to the flow is doing a local uh, audit is recording in the in the hard disk of the of the flow 
So after that, he will synchronize all this information with our cloud of our analytics cloud. So all the magic happens in that cloud because this cloud have a repository with uh, all the training done before and he will take the new ones and he will say okay these are news and these audios i already get it before and then it's like okay the new ones are like the is 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 the difference okay i i don't really know which audios are these so in that moment is when our our client our customer is going to get into the process it's like okay now i need someone who are in contact with that region with that language and i'm going to use the, this guy to train my platform so i can provide what what i need to explain to our uh, cloud okay these uh, audios are new but i already know what is each one of these uh, audios so what we do is uh we do um we we only use like when i say audios actually is like group of audios like okay the same group the same audio it's not like okay the the human training part is not you you won't need to say if you make four thousand calls and one thousand calls doesn't hasn't been recognized you don't need to go and listen one thousand calls no what the analytics cloud does is they create clusters it's like they make groups and say okay um, that um, from uh, that group of um 1000 calls i didn't recognize i recognize in that 1000 calls and uh, 20 groups and then you will have to go there and listen this 20 different audios or whatever the amount of audios is not recognized and say okay this audio is a voicemail or this is a uh, interception announcement or this is and then you can provide all that information okay so it's very important to understand that uh, this training it have to be done with someone who speak the language and who live in the place because the quality of the training will affect the quality of the classification so the people have to we are together it's like okay that training will be the first two or three trainings we are together so we can explain and we can help with the training but uh, it's good to to the client uh, to do this training every time they make a change for example if they change the the carrier is a good moment to do a retraining if you are operating in a new country okay this is a good moment to um to start a new training okay and then the the state of the of the training is um is changing in that moment it's like okay you if you have like 100 audios and you don't have i don't know you don't have 30 minutes to listen and to classify these audios so you can start and you can finish anytime you have and this will give you like okay well what, what is your progress it's like okay you are in a 50 percent you are in 90 percent so um they will give you uh, the the progress so once you have everything done you will see like this like okay it's finished and then this uh, after this is going to our cluster analytics cluster will sorry analytics cloud will do all the process and will provide all the like all the uh, intelligence to your flow to uh, help 
to improve the classification. It's like, okay, I have a new version of everything I found in that network. So you can add load that to your flow. And this is this can be made automatically between the cloud, the analytic cloud and the and the flow locally uh, hosted in your uh, in your uh, network. So only you have to do click here and then in this cloud and then it's going to upload that new patterns and uh, in the analytics to improve the classification. Then I want to show you a video. I think in a video you can understand how how works that. And um, I think it will be easy to understand. Just let me play here the video. Okay, I'm going to put it in full screen. And then you will see the steps how to go there. It's like you go to training, you start a new training. Now you select a flow. You have more than one. You have to select the right one. You have to select the location and the language. And then you go and... Okay, it's time to start calling and then you start the the calling and then after you finish he's going to do the pre-processing and once you have the pre-processing i'm going to stop here I'm, go I'm going to i'm going to return here okay this is when you finish this is when you finish your um when you finish your uh, dialing process okay you already have the audit so they synchronize with the uh, with the cloud uh, analytics. This is not happening at the with that velocity. We actually we cut all the process, but this will take some time because it's like it's a very intensive um, process. It's like analyzing this audio to detect uh, which of these audios are new and which are not uh, are completely unknown then this takes some time so after that we start this uh, classification progress that this is the part where the customer is going to listen the audio i don't know i'm not sure if you are listening but so the analytics the, the training process show you a possible option is like okay we found something that is really close to that but we are not sure that is the same audio so you can go there and you can select and say okay it's the same audio or you can say no it's a new one i'm going to show you i think this one is a, a new one okay then you can create a new one and then you can add it are you okay in this in this they have to create a new audio so they have to specify okay it's not it's a not for it's a forwarding audio or not found audio uh, not not found number audio so you can create a new audio if you if your is if, if analytics doesn't found as a as a like recognize audio you can add new audio and you can put your your own like title you can name it whatever you want and this will identify your audio and then the next time the after the processing of the cluster look at that it's like all the audios we found it and then you send it to the cloud and after that the cloud is finished the process and then you can synchronize this new model with the flow let me let me see the last part for example here okay you are synchronizing this new model with the flow and after that your flow is going to be able to classify these audios that doesn't exist before in that um, platform, okay? I already showed you this. Then one thing that is very interesting to say is that um, 
just give me a minute i'm going to i'm going to try to do this uh full screen i'm going to close it and put it again okay i think it's okay now perfect one thing one very important thing is that um inside could be multi-tenant so you can use it for uh, for a big amount of floats for example you have more than one flow i told you you can use it for that you can use it for different amount of customers for example if your business is not implementing the solution is just only to provide the service of classification okay it's perfect you can do classification you can select the flow do you want to train and you can select the pattern okay this is going to uh, to dial to mexico and i want in, in spanish so you can manage everything in just one inside and this could be completely multi-tenant so if you want to send a username and a password to a customer and do you want to set an account for only that specific um, a platform or operation then you can do that it's like okay this is your username this is your password and they will only able to see what is happening with their own platform that's something very very interesting because you can use the same inside and you can put more than one operation in that uh, solution it's a multi-tenant operation and how i said before manager is also available in cloud so you will find that um that uh, all these benefits you have in the on-premise or virtualized um solution you will you can get it to in cloud so that means that if your operation your scenario allows you to send the calls to that cloud and you you won't have uh, delays or problems with uh, with uh, with that for example sometimes it don't even uh, are not like uh, technical things it's more like okay uh, security things sometimes the the business you are operating for they don't want to send calls send their audio calls to another uh, platform outside your platform it's like you have to take care of my security <coughs> sorry i will take a glass of water so just a minute But this is not your case. If this is not your case, you can use manager one at cloud and you can you can put all you can send all the calls for the cloud and will be easy to to you to operate that because it's like okay, you don't need to pay uh, this maintain fees, you don't need to um you are going to do uh, like implementation costs, but it's completely reduced it's not the same and the implementation will be a lot of easiest it's, it's the easiest way to implement um a manager one so uh, i highly recommend to consider this kind of solution okay and we are finished this is a uh, thank you in portuguese and this is the finish of our tra technical training our um, theoric part then now i'm going to show you a flow how looks a flow in a in a, in a virtual machine that i have so just give me a minute i'm going to start the server if you feel like i have a, a noise it's normal because i'm going to uh, start a server that i have a virtualization server so uh, just give me a minute and i will go back
It's a very noisy server. Uh, maybe you are not listening. I, I'm not sure if you are listening or not. I will. I, I'm not going to talk to see if you are listening or not. Okay, I'm using a, a filter in order to to not allow the the noise goes to you. But believe me, this server is really noise. Um, I'm going to. I'm going to open here. It's like I'm going to change the the screen, and I'm going to access to this platform. I'm going to check if you have any other um, any other question here. Let me see. Okay. Okay. And then I'm going to access to the IP. Of this, just let me change this. Uh, okay, and I go to access to the network of my platform. I'm using how I said before. I I'm, I'm using Prosmox. This is a uh, Platform for for um, just let me check something here. Just one more minute. I'm going to use my Linux laptop to do it more simple. I want to show you here. Yes. One more minute. So, okay, training. I want to <clears throat> want to provide to you another information. If you want to do, if you want to get all these uh, slides, I'm going to give you this checking that, that you will find out in the, the this QR code. So you can download all this, um, all the material we are having right now. Okay, I think now I will have access to this.
Ok. Ok, perfect. I have access right now. I will share my screen. You, are, you cannot see my screen right now. Just let me to update here. <clears throat> okay, perfect. So now you can see the my virtualization, my Proximus. Okay, so um, let me see if you, okay, perfect. Now you can see my virtualization software. So I'm going to start a virtual machine. It's, it's very easy to install the, um, our the flow solution. It's like, it's, it's very easy. If you want to download the ICO, I'm going to show you how to do it. You have to go to the site, to the comp site and you can go to and you can access in english here and go directly to the restricted area if you don't have your an account with uh with comp you can go here and say okay sign up and select telecom partners and then in this form you will just fill this form and you will be contacted by email to finish your uh, registration. Okay. I already have an account. So I'm going to check this to say I'm not a robot. Sign. And okay. I have this. And if you go to Descargas, uh, this is in Portuguese, but you can set it the idiom. You can, okay, I can put it in English. And now it's in English, so I can go to downloads and go to flow. Here, flow. So in this part, in, in our, our website, you will find the last version of our flow. It's completely free to download. You don't need to to any you're not going to get any charge for download it and if you want to do like a test uh, a, a trial or do you want to active a demo to see how to configure and to study it for the certification is uh, you can contact us and then uh, you can we can provide to you a license for uh uh, two weeks or a month, uh, the enough time you need to uh, study about the flow. So you can find here the firmware, the is the ICO. Then you can download it here. I already had down downloaded and I already had installed. It. And then you can go there to the update, and then this is this will be the update. Okay, this one will be the update. So take care of that. You will need to know. You will need to to uh, to download the firmware. This is the one you are going to use to install the the flow, and this one is going to use to update the flow. Okay. So once once you have the the ICO and you install it, how I said before, you can use whatever you have. Uh, if you have a beamware, if you have a, uh, if you have a hyper -B of the, from Microsoft or you have a cloud or you have a server, a physical server, you can prove it, you can test it. It's very easy to, to install. It's a, it's a Linux installation. It's a very, it's this kind of installation that is next, next, next. It's very easy. And at the end, you will have something like that. I'm going to start my flow have have this uh, virtualization platform is proxmox i'm going to start 
and you will see your machine starting like that. I'm going to connect the console one more time. I'm going to console here. Okay, I'm having some. I'm going to start. Okay, I think I haven't started. And then I can go to the console. Okay, this is how it looks. Once it's installed, it's going to start like any other any other um Linux machine is going to start. So just let me to okay, I think he works better like this. I'm going to clean some of this. Okay, now I have uh, the flow is totally loaded and what I have to do is check this you can see this address is like it's the IP address thing I will go to this address I think it was 195 I will check again to, just to be sure it's 195 perfect so you will get this message. You go to advance and proceed to the address. So you will find, you will find something like that. Then this is the main screen, the login screen of the flow. You will have here um, the option to change the language. So I'm going to choose English. And how I said before, you can see the version of the package. Okay, if we see, we have the same version that I found in um, in the uh, comp documentation site, the downloads site. So the default username is admin and the password is um, comp. That's why you have to take care. It's so like if you are doing an impl implantation, if you are going to use in production, just take care and change the default password because every single uh, product from our telecom line have the same username and the same password. And obviously you need to, to change this default username and password. I'm going to administration right now and then I have this. If you see, you have four main menus. You have four menus. You have configuration, monitoring, diagnostic, and administration. In these four menus, you have everything you need to, know, to use to operate one of our flows. So it's very intuitive. It's very easy to understand. And then I'm going to explain each one of these uh, options you will have in this uh, configuration screen. If you go to administration, you will see, okay, I can see this first line. I have like this option, download gateway, MIP, gateway information, remote shell, shoot down the gateway and reboot the gateway. These two, the, the last one is easy to understand what uh, this buttons does because it's like okay reboot the get the gateway is just reset the gateway and shoot down the gateway is sending the shoot down signal to the gateway in order to stop the flow we have to access to the remote shell this is a shell that was thinking to the software uh, team so for the user doesn't have any meaning and in gateway information you will have all this information this is really really good because uh, for uh, for create the licenses you will need to provide this information this hardware id all the time you need a license uh, that could be for production or maybe for a demo, you will need to provide this information, this hardware ID, because this will, all the license we uh, generate will be attached to that hardware ID and only works with that hardware ID. So 
you need to provide that and you need to keep the same configuration, the same hardware configuration in your platform. This is very important because if you move something, you change the the hard disk size or you change, you add more um, RAM or you change, you add a new uh, network interface, this could be changed and then your license is not going to work because the system is going to interpret that as like you change the machine. It's not the same machine. So take care of that because it's very important. We have another option that is like cloud licenses. That's a different story because that kind of licenses that uh, is, well, is, is a different method of, um, of check, of validation. So this kind of licenses, you have a server for licenses and then this server will you, allows you to share uh, whatever you contract with us with the servers you are using it's another kind of license but i'm speaking about hardware license right now you have the system and you have the cpu you have the memory and you have the disk so uh, you have the, it's like get what information about the flow Now I'm going to gateway meet. So if you have a, if you have a solution like Elastics, uh, sorry, you have something like uh, Savix or you have something like uh, Nagios, you have a server, a monitoring system. You can use this MIP because this is the, the SNMP. It's like SNMP clients so we can share all the information what what's going on with our flow with your uh, monitoring server with this client and then we can synchronize a lot of, a lot of information that you can graphic there and you can analyze and you can put your own alerts and your own alarms there so it's very useful to do that i'm going to i'm going to make it bigger in order to okay i think now is better okay another thing is like system users this is really interesting the system user because it's like right now it's like only have one admin user but you can create a new user you can say okay i want to create a user miguel i want to use i'm going to put an easy password and i, I can configure okay what i want Miguel has access. Then I can put okay. Miguel can diagnostic. Miguel can do monitoring, but cannot do administration or configuration. I can save that. I register the new user, and then now I have two users. One is a full user. It's like it's a full and full admin user. Everything is full here. And in this one, I have just full monitoring and full diagnostic. What happens if I go off? I'm going to get into with Miguel. And now if you see, I can, the configuration uh, button doesn't show you anymore. I have monitoring, diagnostic, I have all the diagnostic tools and administration appears, but doesn't let me do anything, only change the password. So this is perfect when you give access to one of your collaborators, but you don't want to share, share everything. It's like, okay, all the attributes, you only want to provide certain uh, amount of uh, power to control the, the the platform so you can create this kind of user okay i'm going back to the admin user here okay going back to administration and 
then I can see, okay, I have, um, I'm going to delete this user. Okay, I already have the same users. Okay, speaking about licenses, licenses is very important because if you don't have licenses, anything, nothing is going to work in the flow. So you have to take care about your licenses and you have to really know to you have to understand what your license are enable enabling in your operation for example they here have analytics and i have boy calls and I have gateway boy calls that means that i can process 30 calls in all my, my operation and all that 30 calls could be set up for a use a, a call progress detection for use analytics so i can classify that i can classify that 30 calls okay how can i make a download of my license i can go here downloads and then i can download my license and you are going to save a klf file with your license this is a uh, this is good because sometimes uh, you have to change your your operation mode and maybe you need to uh, download your licenses to know not to lose that license okay perfect i have an aspiration day look at this like this this is not a real aspiration day so this license is uh is how you say it's like is uh, with no limits doesn't have any limits doesn't have any expiration date and you have the serial number and the hardware id exactly the same you have here in the gateway information okay another thing you can do is sorry is update a license you can get here you can put your license you have a new license and you can put it here and send it to the system the flow is going to validate the license and activate in case in everything is okay another thing you can do in this screen is download the backup configuration this is very useful to uh, do a backup even with a license he's going to do a backup of the licenses so it's very useful and right next to this button you will find restore backup okay, uh, configuration so you can get uh, any backup you made in some moment of your flow and you can recover in that moment okay this part is for updating the flow or you can do update or downgrade in case you need it's not it's not a common case it's like normally uh, anytime we do a update it's like is is mature enough to to ensure that you are receiving a a better uh, version of the software but if you need for some reason it's okay something is not working it doesn't have the same behavior you can go back to the uh, to a past uh, firmware version how do you do that is just select select the one you want to you want to update for example i want to update this and you can do update i'm not going to do it because it's in the last one so doesn't mean doesn't doesn't make sense to me right now but you can do it anytime you need you can go here and you can put uh, the new uh, fingers the new package and you can downgrade to any other package perfect i'm going now to configuration i'm going to explain the general configuration of this um or our flow so i can go here to system and i can see all the network configuration uh, i told you that this um this flow is hosted is running in a 
virtualization platform. So if you need to configure uh, an interface, you can put it here and definitely is the best way to do it is to put it static. Right now is is taking an IP address via a DHCP server, but you can configure this manually and you can put your network and you can put your gateway. I don't want to lose my uh, IP address. If I make a mistake, I'm going to lose. I'm going to let you because it's like, it's more for educational purposes, but uh, you can configure and you can set up your IP address manually. Another good thing you can do it is uh, you can do is um, configure D DNS. So you can go here if you need, for example, if you need to create, uh, you need to configure um, zip trunk and the zip trunk is using a domain, then you will need to configure that DNS server. So, uh, it's very important in order to configure the time server. Sometimes server is like, okay, I, I need a time server. So um, I, get, I will put the domain. So that's the, please don't forget to do this configuration. You will need a DNS server to resolve that kind of um, domains. <laughs> Sometimes you need uh, a static road to communicate with a network uh, over a specific um, uh, internet, sorry, Ethernet interface. So you can alter it here. Okay, I want to communicate with this network. I'm going to put any random network here. And I say, okay, this is the network, this is the mask. And this is the gateway. And I'm going to put any gateway here. And then you can assign the interface you need to communicate. In this case, you only have one, but if you're a virtual machine, you can create more than one network and you can link it to the physical links. So you can put more than one interface here and then you can do this static roads uh, who normally make a lot of um, sense for for some scenarios so uh, it's a very good feature inside our flow okay i'm not going to update anything here i just want to show you and then now i'm going to tls description in encryption okay how i said before Flow allows you to communicate with Cypher uh, embedded, then not only for uh, signaling, instead for um, for RTP too. So the audio you can cipher, you can encrypt the audio. So you can you have two options. You have uh, you can create a self signal certificate here inside our flow, or you can use an existing certificate so you decide how to use it but uh, in that case that certificate is going to be used for do this um, cipher uh, task another thing that is very important is to select okay with which service i'm going to use to access to my configuration website I'm going to use HTTP or I want to use only secure HTTP so I can activate or deactivate these services. Okay, let's move to VoIP configuration. I'm going to talk about general configuration parameters. So here in this screen, I can see that I can configure the range of the ports for RTP. So I can use uh, UDP, TCP, and I can customize all these ports. <coughs> okay, sorry, I need some water. Uh, after two hours of speak. 
in the unit somewhere. So here we have all these parameters then you can customize but you have to remember that these are global global zip or global boy parameters so take care of that because you will find more parameters in the naps i'm going to explain what is an app in the future so uh, you will take just please take care that this is global configuration so anything you alter it here will be global okay how i said before i can add media units and the media units remember that the media units is the is the part of this new architecture that lets you to do um, analytics and transcoding in other box okay you don't need to do it in the same instance of flow you can put a, a, a unit uh, and a media unit so in that way uh, they can take care of all the media processing so in that uh, in that scenario flows will only process a uh, signaling and the media will be processing the media unit if you, you if we don't configure that we are like assuming that you don't need a media unit that the flow is the same the same instance of the flow will process the media so if you in our case today we are going not to configure anything here we are going to let that way so but it's important that you understand that you have this option to configure media unix i'm going to move to cdr cdr in this screen we can activate cdrs and then we can customize any of the any of our cdr so i can i can put here and i can configure i can go there and um, customize which information i want to see for example in the default in the default uh, pattern we don't find information about analytics so i can act i can okay okay i can search this one and then i can take it and this is this work as a drag and drop so I can put it, okay, I can have an analyzer stamp. I'm going to put a comma and I'm going to finish that way. So I can build my own pattern in order to make it more, to add more information to my pattern. So I can do all of this that way. And it's going to work really well then you can customize everything here okay and to put here here and here so the only thing i need once uh everything is configured is going to save and going to apply then i'm going to apply and now the CDR is recording as registering the information that way. We have this. Okay, sorry, I have more information in the CDR uh, button. So I have here uh, a configuration about the radius. This is very important because radius is the protocol that use inside to communicate with the flow. So they will use this protocol to synchronize all the information that everything is happening in the flow. All call, every call is processing by the flow is going to uh, appear as uh, an information in the inside. So um, the this way they communicate is this protocol, that's the radius protocol. So you will need to activate and configure all these server but this is something that normally our support team does. So this is not something that you will mess with. Okay. And another thing is the, the FTP server. All these CDR are going to be here in the agnostic. You will find the CDR. Now, how I said before, this is a new instance. I don't have calls here. So 
uh, but I can configure the behavior or these CDRs, like how it's going to work, how, how many days is going to be a storage in my hard disk. So I can, I can put it, that information here by default is 30 days, or I can use it an FTP server to synchronize this is going to synchronize every day so uh, you will get all this uh, compressed CDR will be a uh, storage at that server so it's very interesting when you want to put uh, all this CDR in another server in order to keep or in order to be analyzed for another platform okay and now in this version you have uh you have the option to put the cdr in a database too so um you can synchronize the cdr with the database in order to feed um, a billing system or to do any other um any other to fit any other platform you had so um this is how CDR database works. Okay, I have the insight. I have more detail about the insight integration. How I said before, you have to configure the radius, but you have to configure here too. And then this is uh is this is more about security parameters. So you will close a really secure communication. I have something very, very important that is date and time. You need to you need to uh, configure day and time because uh, everything you have a lot of things that depends of that date and time. For example, if you are creating a case, a support case in our support uh, team, they will they probably will ask to you to provide captures and logs of any event you you have the uh, the problem. So it's very important to have all this capture with the right date and time in order to understand where is the problem. So this is my first advice. Once you uh, configure the network, you can go there, go straight to day and time and then try to do it right uh, at that right time, configure the date and time. So if you have an internal a server of network time server, you can use uh you can use a server, you can put an IP address, or if you are going to use an external one, you can put the domain. Then so this is if you want to configure your NTP server or secure NTP server. If you want to Put it manually, you just need to alter it here and then you, you will select the time zone. You go, okay, America. You go, for example, America. You can go put it Bogota or Sao Paulo, whatever you are. I have a lot of options here. I'm going to select here. I'm going to select Bogota. He, oh, sorry. Bogota. He, okay. <clears throat> so I can put, I can select this. And if you, if you want to get the hour and the day and the date automatically from a server, you can check this box and configure this parameter. I'm going not, I, I'm not going to save anything. I'm going to let that way. Okay. I moved to firewall and this is something very interesting because this is a tool for security that uh, I really recommend you to use because if you have a flow, normally a flow is something is installed inside a network, but is is a good uh, practice if you try to close, okay, which servers or which IPs is going to speak with the flow. So I can set like a 
this kind of a uh, uh, allowed address list and a blocked address list. So, for example, if I already know that the segment of my network is, uh, I'm going to put an example here, one eight two one six eight two hundred ten, and then the mass is uh, is twenty four. I can do something like that. Sorry, like here. Okay, now it's right. And I can do that for any segment of my network or even I can select a specific IP address. So I'm closing the, the, the okay, which elements are going to be able to talk with my flow and with IPs, uh, which IPs is going to um, get access to the administration and not only the administration, even the calls. So it's very important. But I want to remember that if you, for the by default, the flow comes with this uh, rule, is any. Obviously any is, um, is any network, but you have to take care if, you, I, if I put the any, all these rules, all these policies I established before is not going to work because it's, this any is like, is, is more power. So uh, you have to take care if you want to make this uh, useful, you have to remove the, the, the any, it's then it, now you can only have access with this IPs. Another thing is that you can block all the addresses that are not present in all of address. So when you check that, it's like only this address will be allowed. So take care because if you make a mistake here, you possibly you will lose the access and you will need to contact com to recover your uh, flow. Okay. If I, if I, okay, I, I want, I don't want to be that retreative. I just want to say, okay, here I can put any, and now I'm going to block certain addresses. So I'm going to say, okay, I want to go here and I want to put a, a specific address, could be internal or external if you have the flow, if your flow is in a public address and is receiving, it's not common to have a flow in a public address, but if that's the case, that is not common, I say again, but if that's the case, you can use the firewall to block any uh, intrusion attempt you had from, that, from, from the internet. So you can check the logs, you can analyze, okay, which which is the address that is attacking me um, and you can put it here and then the flow is don't even go to speak with that address it's like okay this address is not going to speak with the with the with our platform <laughs> and then this is a good way to use blacklist these blocked addresses okay you can select the services that are able on every internet um, interface you put in the flow. So only uh, right now I only have one, but I can say okay, I want to I want to block, for example, I belong, I want to block the FTP access in this network. I don't want to anyone trying to access to my server via FTP protocol. I can make that change, give save and apply and the firewall will help me to do that. Another good uh, tools is the intrusion detection. If we we can detect if you have a, a brute force tool trying to access to our um, to our flow uh, and then you can do it by web portal access by brute force or SSH access to brute force. Then you can select okay how many how many retries 
how many time you are going to block and which is the period that you are going to analyze to decide if you are going to block or not. So you will find here, not only for web portal, uh, but also with HHH protocol, okay? Let's move to VPN. You have the option to configure a VPN in order to connect to a network. This is a VPN client, okay? And this is only works for open VPN. So it's an option, it's a very good option to, to connect um, a platform with uh, <clears throat> that use uh, open VPN. Then you can use that tunnel as a interface at a internet interface. So it will be very useful to this kind of scenario, scenarios where the client says, okay, I'm, I'm going to connect to, I'm going to provide to you a, a VPN a account so you can get access to my network over a VPN. Okay. It's not, it's not common. It's not recommended because this kind of tunnel makes half a, a, a CPU resources and machine resources load. But in in case you need, uh, is there the option to do it? I can configure the license service. Is what I said before. Is like if you have uh, uh, you have two type of licenses. You can have uh, like a hardware licenses or license servers licenses. In this kind of licenses, you have to put your server here, you have to configure, then this server is going to manage your licenses, not only in these flows instead of, or, but also in all the flows you have in your network. Okay, you can import con configuration. This is uh, really nice because um, it's not the same that the backup, backup, the backup we saw in the administration is going to copy the licenses. But if you are working with a flow and you want to reply a configuration that you made in another flow, you can import a configuration and he's not going to take uh, that uh, license. In, he's not going to do anything with licenses because it's only the configuration. That's, so this is the best way to copy a configuration of an previously, previously configured uh, flow. How I say you can configure a database. Now the, we, can, we can record all the CDRs in database and this database could be internal or could be external. So if you want to manage the database, this is the option where you can configure that. And, I go, and another very good uh, feature of our flow is the configuration history. In this configuration history shows you anything happened in your flow. For example, I'm going to show you that I create, I create a new user. Here I can see, add new user. I may log off, I may log in, and I may log in with the user Miguel. After that, I log off Miguel and log, log, in, me, log in admin again. I remove the user Miguel and update CDR configuration. Then I can see anything happened with my flow. And even if I remove something or I make a change, I can go here and say, okay, I want to restore from this moment. So. Mm, this is very useful if you have more than one users with uh, with uh, administration um, attributes or super user attributes. Then you can you can go back to an uh, systems uh, configuration. Okay, 
Now I'm going to move. This was like general system configurations. We already finished with that part. So I can go here and get activate the telephony uh, configuration. And I can see like numeric portability. How I said before, this is one of the our features. We can configure this uh, numeric portability. And this is going to help me to, this is a service actually, this is an external service normally, where you can do a consultation. You can go there and say, okay, I want to know uh, which operator is this number. This is something that is very useful here in Brazil. So many people use that. But if you, it's an option. It's like if you don't need it or you have something locally that do the same, you can use it locally. Okay. And we have uh, also, we have uh, some, some parameters to configure the analytics. Is, this is a, like a global configuration of analytics. So I can see things like, Answer silence duration, silence timeout. This is global. This is very important. This is not the same I show you about the analytics that with the profiles and you can put it uh, this configuration for each nap or for each road. This is global. So this, for example, if you want to, which is the the answer silence duration? Okay, this is one second, and then. You can configure all the times and all the parameters for your analytics, but you have to remember that this is global. Okay, let's go to NAPS. Let's go to routing. Now we are going to start configuring the telephony. I mean, it's like we, uh, we were uh, studying the global system configuration, the telephony global configuration. And now we are going to implement your scenario in our solution. So the important thing you need to know is like, we have different elements and we call any, any element that is going to receive or make calls with our flow, we are going to call it NAP and NAP is network access points so uh, flow only speak zip protocol so all the elements you are going to declare declare here are zip elements so you you can you can go there and you can put something like ip addresses names for example if you have a dialer you have a, okay i'm going to declare okay this is my dialer one you can put the name of the vendor, the version, whatever you want. <coughs> and you can select, for example, you have two options. You can select SIP or local SIP. This is important. What is the difference between SIP and local SIP? If you have an internal element, if your element is internal, it's like, this is a dialer that is in the same network of your platform, or you have a PBX, this is local, and then you have to select local. Okay. Why? Because this is not doing NAT. If this is not doing NAT, we don't need to do any, it's like any, um, changes in the way we co communicate with the, uh, the, uh, this element because this element is local it's in the same network we don't need not to do that so this is very important because another option is to use zip and which is the difference because zip is used when you are going to access this element this nap is not in the same network as in another network, it's like, okay, this is my provider, this is my carrier, this is my ITSP, this is, uh, this is an, an element that is not in the same network that my dealers, it's not mine, it's an external provider, it's, it's, it could be a carrier, this, then it's very important because this activates NAT, 
Network Address Translation, activate um, one of our uh, security uh, features, how I say, topology hiding. This is going to start doing topology hiding. So this is very important to choose the right SIP communication, okay? And of course, this, you need a special license to do this because this is a security feature. So in order to use this feature, you will need to contact your, your uh, commercial, your uh, executive seller. And I say, okay, I need to communicate with a trunk, zip trunk, then I need to, I don't need 100 calls uh, through this uh, carrier. So I need this kind of licenses. Then you need a special license to do this. Okay, I'm going to, but actually it's almost the same. If you see, it's, it's almost the same. It doesn't change any anything between zip and local zip is just internal what we we do and how i said before we have a virtual circuit to communicate with kmgs i'm not going to talk anymore of this uh, feature because it's a feature that was thing to be used with our KMG, kngs and you have the option to use group group is nothing else than a group of zip naps for example, you have the alerts and you want to put it in the same group to est establish a routing policy. Perfect. You can do that. You can create every single NAP with local SIP. And after that, you can create a group. Okay. I'm going to create a local SIP just to show you. Then I'm going to put any IP here. I'm going to put any IP here to uh, one four. I think one forty, and I can I can do like I can activate register, for example, if I want to send a registration, I can send a registration. So, if, for example, if this trunk is with a PVX and that PVX require to be registered, I can do that. I can send a registration. So. I can configure authorization, username, username, password, everything you need to re register. But also you can do something like, okay, I want that. I want someone register on my flow. That's possible. That's possible too. You can put um, username, authorization, username, password, and expiration time. Uh, just take care to understand when you are going to register and when someone is going to register in the flow. I'm going to disable. I'm going to need it. And some of the things, these parameters as optional, it's like, okay, for some reason, some uh, boy engines need to needs this special configuration. This is a, like a, a general configuration too in the NAP. Uh, you will have more options, more SIP options once you uh, program the profiles. You, you can make your own SIP profiles too for the NAPs. Right now I'm using the default profile. Look at this, it's like, it's the default profile. I'm not, I'm not moving with anything. And right now, I'm going to show you after the profile and then you can choose and configure more precisely some of these options here. And another option is the keep alive. I really like this feature. I, I really like this option because this is like the, this is like the ping in the world of SIP. So you can say anytime you want to know if someone speak SIP in a certain IP address, you can activate this and you can put how many seconds you want to send an option. So uh, you will get an answer only in case you found uh, some kind of uh, element that speaks SIF, you are going to receive back um, a SIF option too. For example, if you have a PBX, you have a soft phone, 
if you have a dialer, you will get an answer and that answer will will be a C option in that specific IP address you does, doesn't have any zip element, you are not going to receive any answer. So this is the equivalent to the spin, but in the zip world. Then you can activate it only in the implementation process. You can activate it. You don't need to activate it all time. You can activate it only for that. So uh, it will be really useful to and make to understand if I have an answer, a zip answer in that IP address is highly recommendable. Okay, another thing you have to understand is that you you can configure, okay, you can select which network I want to use for any NAP. And you will see something very interesting that I didn't select here uh, I didn't configure my internet, ether, uh, my Ethernet interface. I will need to go back to here, system, network, and I'm going to say, okay, it's not disabled. I'm going to enable DHCP. And now he's asking me to apply the configuration. And I say, okay, this is DHCP configuration. I'm not sure that my network is going to give me the same number. I, I think it will, but let me see what happened. The good thing is I can go to Proxmox and open the console. I don't have any change here. It's like 197, I think change. Right now it's 197. He moved it. Okay, he moved, uh, he changed the IP address. Uh, I was lucky, I was, I can't I can get it from the console. But you have to take care because the ideal is like, is like what I recommend is not use DHCP, is use static. How I say this is a, uh, this is a educational a scenario, so I did it. Try, I I try to make it easy, but the real thing is to use static here. I'm going back to NAP. And I'm going to go to this. I'm going to open this uh, zip local, and now I can select. Like you, you can see, I can select. Uh, an interface I can select before I couldn't select an interface now I I put a, a real IP address so I can select the interface if I have more than one interface I can select more than one interface I can sorry I can choose between more than one interface okay another good thing is that I, I can specify which kind of transport type I'm going to use in my flow, not only for uh, signaling, but also for audio, for RTP. So uh, for some vendors, they use to, they use, for example, a SIB with TCP in order to count and qualify the network. Uh, uh, I know that the case of Abaya is, is that case. Is they they use that how a uh, way to count and qualify the network. But f by default, SIB in the ninety percent of the cases is uh, is UDP, UDP, and not only for signaling but also for audio. Okay, this is. I'm, go, I'm going to. I'm going to put some name here. I'm going to put here PBX. I don't have any PBX right now, but I'm going to put any PBX here, and I say, okay, this is my nap. I'm going to create another nap, and I want to say, okay, this is my SBC. 
I have a PBX and I have an SBC. I'm going to say, okay, this is zip local to, and I'm going to put uh, another IP. The same interface, everything, I'm going to let everything in default. And now I have two NAPs, two zip local NAPs. And this is the beginning to make roads. And then I'm going to do a here is like roads. I'm going to put it again in, sorry, I have our configuring in, in Portuguese. I'm going back to English. And then I can configure roads here and then I can create a new road. Okay, in this road, I'm going to I'm going to create a row, for example, I'm going to say out, outbound, I'm going to say, okay, outbound, perfect, I have outbound here, and I'm going to select the origin of the calls, then the origin nav is PBX, and the destination nav is SBC, and now I can start doing some configuration for routing but this will be part this road will be part all the routing system will be part of our training that we are going to give the system of June how I said before if you can if you do can do the check-in I will leave you here I will let you hear the check-in you can do the check-in here i'm going to i'm going to switch here you have you can go here and you can do the chicken get this material and we are going to use that email to send to you the information of our new advanced training of manager one but i want to i want to finish our content just uh, uh, talking about profiles i'm not going to explain more deeper the roads Normally, a uh, road is a uh, origin call and a destination call, and then I can put regular expressions to in order to define what kind of conditions uh, of, of the inbound number uh, have to uh, match, and I even I can I can modify that I can modify any number like the origin number or the destination number and i can put conditions for any of this call it or call it number it's something that is i think is common to all uh, telephone operation telephone network telephone next sig networks but i'm going to explain more in uh, with detail in the next training and here i want to talk about profiles and i want to finish with the profiles because here i can do customized profiles so I can say okay I want to talk zip and this is the right zip configuration zip customization that works with my SVC and here I can activate analytics profile because this call analyzer right now I don't have any any profile created so I can I, I can't choose any analytics profile but this is where you can choose this. Uh, we are going to see that in the next training. So I can take care, for example, uh, which is my, my fax mode. I can use the different fax modes. I can uh, set volume control, and then I can, if if I I, I see okay, this zip trunk is uh, the level of audio is quite uh, low i can get into i can amplify that and you can use it by default is a volume control is automatic you can configure something about the zip only for this profile and i will show you that this profile at the end i can save this profile and i can use it and i can use it in my roads I don't have new roads, but I can use it in my NAP2. 
So I can go there and say, okay, this is the sieve of my SBC. I can go here and say, this is the profile. Sorry, this is the profile you will use. And this configuration, this customization will be the SIP that my app is going to apply. That's something really useful because SIP protocol is not like, it's not uh, a well, it's a well-defined protocol, but each vendor use it in different ways. So if we understand that, we can customize every single uh, customization of these vendors, and then we can make it flow more interoperable. That's the, that's the idea of the profiles. And we have, the, we have analytics profile too, how I said before, but uh, here we don't even add any analytics behavior, but you will see that this is something very useful. We are going to see this in the next training too. That's why you have to get um, ready for that training and you have to be, um, you have to follow us in our social networks, in our Facebook and our YouTube, because you will be um, uh, not, you will be notified of any action that we have here in Com Academy. Okay. So I think that's everything for today. I want to, I want to really appreciate all the people who be with us in this training to participate with us in this training. Um, I want to say thank you to Igor and Luciano. I'm going to put the, I'm going to write here in the, in this, in this slide. I'm going to change the slide. Then you can see the information of Igor, but is Igor uh, at com.com. Com is uh, K H O M P. So you can go there. You can write it if you have any commercial issue to to talk with Igor. Is the is the best person to do that. And if you have any question about this technical training, you can write to me to miguel arroba com .com, miguel at com .com, or academy arroba com .com. Then I don't have anything more for today. Uh, please join us in the next training, in the next advanced training. I think you will really like um, that. This part of the theory uh, was very important. We take some time to do this uh, theory part, theoretical part, because it's, it's very important you to understand which is the, uh, the, the focus of this software and this solution. And we begin to see how to configure the flow. The next step is to explore a little more about the inside and see how can I set my analytics in order to get this answer machine detection that is one, one of the, our most successful uh, features here at Com with Maya. Okay, thanks again for being here. See you in the next training. Have a good day. Ciao, ciao.